Today on Furniture on the Mend, we're going to begin a new project, an Empire Armoire. And we're going to be doing some ironing, so stay tuned. on the men. This <laughs> is the Empire Show. That's right, and it strikes back against us. Look, it's all apart. But we're going to get it back together again as soon as you see the next two shows. <laughs> now, is this a true Empire piece? It's not piece? true. We did some research, and we found out that this was made in the late 1800s. See, true Empire went from 1815 to 1840, and it's an interesting era in design because it came from a man who never designed, a small man, who never designed a piece of furniture in his life. You and mean it, Billy Barney? His name was, no. Oh. It was Napoleon. Napoleon. Yes. Napoleon liked to conquer things, but he was never too busy to appreciate the local arts and crafts. That's right. He was, well, he liked gold, mm -hmm. he liked Lovely. furniture, oh. and he liked artists. And he liked to take them all with him before he leveled the town. So you might say he was driven. And as he went throughout his travels to Egypt, uh, uh, he brought back uh, all the designs as well as those of Greece and Rome. And, and he, he said, let's do something with all this. <laughs> right. He took archaeologists and artists with him well, he, he, to copy the design. That's right. And he came back, and there was a man named Jacques-Louis David. David. Right? He's the guy that did that big that painting of, of Napoleon on the horse. The horse got the big butt. The horse, <laughs> not Napoleon. The horse, right. He headed, he headed this little group that, that made all this furniture. Right. And what we have is uh, designed by governmental edict. And they, since Napoleon had a great new plan, it was called uh, the Napoleonic Empire, he decided to call it all empire. Although we suspect he was just trying to get around calling it Republican furniture. Yeah. So here we're going to uh, look at some of the design uh, cues of empire furniture. First we got a column. Here's a nice big column. Which they stole from Greece. And The uh, top is very ironic. No, no, it's ionic, it's ironic. not ironic. I'm sorry. It's an I'm ionic sorry. column. And uh, everything, uh, there was a lot of gold everywhere. It was a very opulent style. Oh, yeah. He loved gold. And uh, here's a mahogany piece. A lot of the finer uh, well, was empire either, furniture We had some of the mahogany. country empire that mm -hmm. was either birch or pine. But the higher, classier end was mahogany or, or rosewood. Rosewood. Well, look at the feet, for instance. The feet are my favorite part. Look at these guys. They're big, monstrous feet. And we're going to uh, be gold leafing those. Yes, we're going to make as much of it gold as we can afford. And up here in this crown, now the crown, you could see the difference in the color of the wood. If the, the carcass here has got an original dye on it still, because it's, it's impossible to get out these aniline dyes that were applied. You could sand this and bleach it and sand it and bleach it, and this, the red still might be in there. But uh, the top, if you notice, is kind of like a light tan color. That, and that tells me right away that it's new wood. It was probably made in the last 10 years, I'll bet. On a real, genuine uh, empire piece, the top would be much less plain and rectilinear than this. It would be very opulent, well, maybe a maybe scroll a, top. Or a sphinx. Yeah, even a sphinx. He could do anything. It was his world, after all. He was very small. Lots of big things he wanted. I want big things. Most of his things were massive. Right. Uh, the furniture, Josephine. <laughs> now, let's take this down. Wait. You can see inside here, this is all new wood. All new wood. So because you know what gives it away? There's a sheetrock screw right in here. <laughs> yeah, right. See, Napoleon didn't have sheetrock screws. He didn't even have sheetrock. <laughs> so in essence, uh, we know that this top has been bastardized. Can, yeah. we, can we say that? We can say that. Now put this up bastardized, here. Bastardized, bastardized, bastardized. Now so, take that Greek key. Well, actually, for the top, I have commissioned a frieze of the god Bacchus gambling merrily with nymphs and satyrs. No, you did not. Maybe one no, nymph. No, no. A no. satyr. Just a straight finish. Okay. Well, what we're going to do to dress this up a little, we've ordered this Greek, Greek key design that's going to fit in there, and we're going to gold leaf that as well. So, in essence, what you will have is the columns reinstalled. A big, monstrous piece. Reinstalled. And with uh, a lot of gold on them. The Greek key, which will be gold. The, col the, the scroll work, which will be gold. This little collar will be gold. The feet will the be feet gold. The feet will be gold, and the base of the column will be gold. So now this straight piece was stripped for us already. Yeah, but it's still going to have some residue on it. So what we're going to do is we're going to wash this down with some naphtha and scrub brushes to get off any kind of any trace. A lot of removers have paraffin wax in them that allows them to be a paste. So when, after you're done stripping, you always want to wash with some naphtha.
to get rid of any excess. And these are going to be gold leafed. So we want to make sure they're absolutely clean. Yeah, with any kind of big piece like this, you might not want to attempt to strip it yourself. You want to have it dipped and stripped or hand stripped and then do well, what we're doing. A lot of people that sell this type of furniture, they'll sell it to you finished or unfinished. They often have stripping operations going. So for a little more, you can have it stripped for you. That's what we did. Hey, what are you doing down there? I'm taping something. Rolling tape. What we're going to do next is stain. So since these feet are going to be gold leafed, we don't want any stain on the gold leaf. So we're going to tape these, tape these off with the aptly ma named masking tape. And then we're going to tape some newspaper to it. Over here on this side of the, on this front edge, got a patch in here. We're going to throw a stain over this, and then we'll come back and tone this in with some uh, pigment, some brushes, so you can almost not see it. You know, I'm putting some oil stain on here. What am I using? I'm using an oil stain. It's a special walnut. It's some golden oak, burnt sienna, Venetian red, and the fr this top piece, because it is new wood, I'm going to wind up having to restain this, shellac and restain. This wood, because it's already pretty and colored from the old stain, I think we're only going to need one on there, but I'm going to have to match See this? I'm going to have to match this top to this, which is means I'm going to have to introduce a lot more red into this crown. Crown meets stain. Stain meet crown. Life's full of challenges. Drive a car you can depend on. The Nissan Sentra. Oh, well, I'm the kind of life that helps to get you going. When you're on your own out on the road, it's such a comfort knowing you got the snake light from Black and Decker. I get around, 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 I'm the snake light. To order your Black and Decker snake light auto, call 1-800-231-9786. How do you like what we've done with this place? Yeah, we really have come a long way in here. You remember those old beanbag chairs? Oh, man. We wanted something really different, so we went to Pier 1. Rugs, lamps, stuff for the walls, everything. We kept finding exactly what we were looking for at Pier 1. Great stuff. We found pillows and dishes, great furniture. We also found pottery and candles, and we found a great new look for our living room, too. Pretty cool, huh? Find the good things you're looking for at Pier 1 Imports for a change. A woman doctor. It'll be back to the state it was at the end of her mastectomy. A woman patient. After the surgery, I'm looking forward to feeling feminine again. A repaired self-image. Each day I feel stronger, uh, more optimistic. And this is why I did the surgery. It's very rewarding. See the results of breast reconstruction surgery on the operation. Tonight at 9 on TLC. Take it easy. Don't push yourself too hard. I got the columns off laying down here, and I got two spots where I got to do a burn in. These are dings that probably happened. I don't know, something banged into them, or the piece was banged into something else. But, and there's a shellac fill in here. Can you see that? So I want to remove that before I uh, put a new one in. What I'm going to use are these. These are shellac sticks, and they come in all different colors, all the way down from the ice cube. This is a clear, all the way to black. So the way you do it is with this. Now this is called, it's like a soldering iron, but it's, it's called a heat gun or a, uh, a burning gun, rather. There's a little screw here that you can tighten, you can unloosen, and put different tips in. Now this tip, once you plug it in, it gets real hot. And you can see it's smoking now. So I'm going to pull this out, try and dig most of this out. It's kind of like open heart surgery. Now, we have to select. So how are we going to select? Well, probably, uh, I'm going to wet. Now, that's the color you have. So let's select 
one of these babies that's gonna match. I like that one. That looks pretty good. So we can always touch that up again afterwards with a, with a marker before we do the final finish. So let's see if we can burn this in now. I like the way these smell too. They smell kind of like uh, incense. You want to make sure you get enough into the fill because it does settle a little bit. So more is better. And we'll let that set up a little bit. See, it dries real fast. Now I can take some steel wool. Of course, this is an unfinished surface. Take some steel wool and a little bit of lacquer thinner. I'm just going to rub get most of the excess off, if not all. And we'll just stain the column. It, remember, we said this top was not uh, original to the piece. This was newly fabricated. And the, the color of the wood is, is much lighter brown color. Now, it was stained already, and then I shellacked over it. Now I'm going to sand. Sand the piece so we the, can stain it again. Coat. We put the second stain on, but it's still not dark enough. You can see this column here. This is the color we want. It's a very deep red, and the oil stain is just not going to do it. So we got to resort to a finer stain. Not a finer, but a more, a more potent stain, which is an alcohol stain. So, so we're going a step darker. So we're going to take some sandpaper. 100 grit. 100 grit sandpaper, just to roughen up the surface. Roughen up. Roughen up. Roughen up and ready. Whoa. Hey, watch my corner there. Sorry. Now, mentioned the stains before. You must wear gloves. Whereas the oil stain comes off pretty easily with some paint thinner. This Are stuff, you using the uh, June cleaver or the Donna Reed today? These are the June cleaver. This stain does not come off one's fingers. It's a potent. It's a dark red mahogany. Yeah, see, that's... Is more, it working? Well, that's more of what we want, yeah. Not enough for two gloves, I know. But still, over top of this, I am going to shoot a toner. And because this is a small enough piece, I can do it with the tone sprays that we've used before. Now, what did we use to mix this new darker stain? This is straight out of the bottle. Ah, uh, so we didn't mix. It's a methanol-based stain that penetrates wood in the same way that fabric dyes penetrate fabric. Use a respirator when you do this if you're not us. And this should bring it right up to match. Once oh. more, again, into the breach with tone spray. <laughs> right. Well, we're gonna get ready to shellac the piece that we've already stained. But remember, we had this piece that, that was repaired, this it's, little it's a tra patch. trapezoidal piece that was uh, a, a lesser type of wood. It's not an African mahogany, which is what this wood is. Um, so we're going to have to use the tone spray again, just like we did on the crown. Oh, I'm going to just sand it a little bit. Show them the window. Well, that was a surprise. Now you gave it away. I'm sorry. Hold on. Show them the window. Show them the window. <laughs> well, look, so when you, when you want your color, See right there, and now you open this up to match. So you got this little little piece that I exposed, and then you can cover with a piece of tape. Because you're going to be spraying, so you want to be able to color coordinate in that way. Who's at the Cafe Carlisle this week? Uh, <laughs> let's let's put some of this stain on. This is the dark red mahogany stain. A great deal of uh, Empire Furniture was mahogany. Dark and red as was the, uh, the style directly before it. Uh, Neoclassical motifs were popular before the, furni before the furniture called Empire came into popularity. Hello? It's all right. Now, in England, you know, they didn't want to call it Empire, because... They wanted to call it ours. No. <laughs> they wanted to call it 
That rotten little Frenchman's. No, they called it Regency. Right, Regency. Regency. Because they knew they were going to have to play, uh, play Napoleon uh, later. I got some dark red mahogany. Now I'm going to do a little bit of the famous, ever popular, Van Dyke Brown. As we all know, the Duke of Wellington beat him in the Super Bowl. And we find out if it works. Usually it's a big surprise to us. Well, it's always going to look like a patch. You know? And later Anytime we can put probably, a patch in. We can probably touch up that, that seam there. With oh, this will uh, be filled in. We'll fill that in with some wax later and finish right over top of my it. My specialty. And remember, the column's going to be on here, but at least it's a lot less obvious than it was, you know, when we first started. So while that dries and the front dries, we take the shellac, the orange shellac, remember. You know, Bonaparte could have probably fit in this. This was his apartment. And I shall do the drawer front. Now, ordinarily, you would want to uh, take off the uh, knobs on the drawer front. But we've decided not to. Because? Because when we tried, <laughs> the knobs started to break. And that, what that means is there's probably an oversized screw that was put in there. And over the years, it's kind of like formed itself around the wood. Mm -hmm. You start turning the knob or turning the screw, and we heard a little cracking sound. You and know, and if you risk, look... Rather than risk breaking the knob and, and not being able to find a like knob or have to buy two new knobs, we just left it on there. Otherwise, we would remove it. But I think this is a pretty color. Too much acid in your pipes? Better call Rainsoft. In places where people need an air conditioner that lasts a long, long, long time, they know. Okay, kid, run up and see if anybody's home. It's hard to stop a train. We've been looking for a new house. Oh boy, everything's changed. I mean, some of the bathrooms today are bigger than a whole kitchen. And these mortgages, I mean, there, there's a 15-year mortgage, um, adjustable rates, balloons. I know I'm supposed to be excited, but I'm confused. For a free guide that can help you choose the mortgage that's right for you, call the Fannie Mae Foundation. We're showing America a new way home. Hold on tight for twister season. You've heard about the movie, now live through the real thing. Join us for Wonders of Weather, Tornadoes, Wednesday at 9 on TLC. Get ready for how-to advice from the ground up on the Renovation Guide. Coming up next, then double your knowledge, double your fun with back-to-back -back episodes of Home Time. It's all next right here on TLC. It set the standard in do-it-yourself books, but now... We've made the best even better. Introducing the all-new Home Repair and Improvement Series from Time Life Books. With new color illustrations, step-by-step -step instructions, and a new spiral binding so books lay flat, it's never been easier to save money and create the home you've always wanted. You'll learn how to build a deck your family will enjoy for years. The tricks of the trade to install a new patio. Call now to examine decks, porches, and patios free for 15 days. Keep it for the special low TV price of just $1.99. Use your credit card and get this Stanley tape measure absolutely free. Other volumes will follow. Keep only those you want. The new home repair and improvement series from Time Life Books. We've made the best even better. Call 1-800-795-5588 now to get decks, porches, and patios for just $1.99. That's 1-800-795-5588. Well, our piece has been shellacked and stained and shellacked and shellacked and shellacked. 
Well, it was shellacked five times, sanded between coats. And the final coat I sanded with uh, 600 grit, and then a final coat of shellac. Now, next time we start working on this again, we're going to rub it out with some wool and some... Uh, we're going to rub it out. We're going to rub it out with wool and some soapy water. And then we'll be able to size, which is a very mysterious process, that will prepare the feet and various moldings for Believe gold me, I'm going to show you how easy it is to gold leaf. It's nice. You, you can't do it on a windy day. That's right. So next time, gold leafing. You know, let's, let's what? change the ending up a little. I want to stand mean? over there. Stand here? Yeah, I want to stand there. You stand here. Okay. Jinyaru. That doesn't work that way. Yeah, it was backwards. That Much way. better. Much better. Yeah. Okay, and now, this. this. Hi, okay, we got a, a hot, quick fix for you now. And it's called steaming. Done with, a, done with an iron. You need a steam iron. It's all revved up and ready to go. Now, what am I going to do with an iron and a hunk of wood and a hammer? Well, I'm going to make a dent. Because sometimes you have a piece of furniture and it gets a ding in it or a dent. Well, you can steam that out. And what steaming does is it, it swells the wood up. That's right, right through the finish, and it'll bring it back to surface. It'll level it back to the surface. If a, uh, a boulder falls on your piece of furniture, you're not going to be able to get it back with an iron. But something like... This must be a soft hammer. There we go. You got a ding in there. Now, we, we're hoping that uh, you don't go around banging your furniture with a hammer. But uh, this is a demonstration. Okay? So, you want to steam this with an iron and with a cloth. This is a piece of cloth. It's got a little dampness to it. You put it over top of the, the ding. And you don't want to lay it on there and go read a book. No. But it will, if done properly, swell the wood, raise the grain. And it's lifted. It has magically disappeared for the most part. But you can see a cloudiness around here now. Well, that's because the steam and the water has affected the finish somewhat. So if that happens, you're going to have to know how to remedy it. We're going to use a padding lacquer. And then, with a pendulum motion, So use the padding lacquer, don't use the hammer, and the steam iron, and a little bit of sandpaper to smooth the first surface first. And then you get out of breath, and you go to something else. Racing with a <laughs> What are we doing? Clowning around? We're always clowning oh, around. Oh, gosh. But an interesting sidebar is, to the shellac and wax situation is... Do you know these old 78 records? This one's already broken. That's why I'm using it. But this, these records were actually had a shellac base. And that's why they were so heavy. And you can make shellac out of old 78 records. Well, that's I, what I we're going to do right you, now. You go break up your record collection. No, no, don't use a, a fine uh, uh, Caruso or... No or, Duke Ellington. Or Benny Goodman. No Glenn Miller. No Artie Shaw. No. Well, Glenn Miller. But you can, you can do, a, you know, any of the Lombardos. Guy or Carmen. That's right. A Valley, a Vaughn Monroe, a Merv. Or a Merv, definitely. But, uh, or Florence Foster Jenkins. Now listen, That's what we're using. Listen to the dulcet tones of Miss Florence Foster Jenkins. This is what she sounds like. <laughs> Horrible, isn't it? <laughs> this was a very rich woman who <laughs> once a year would rent out a large concert hall. Like Carnegie Hall. Carnegie Not Hall. a concert hall. Carnegie Hall. And uh, she would sing. And she was always sold out, believe it or not. And uh, we're going to break up a Florence Foster Jenkins. Right now. I always wanted to do that, just like the Stooges. Look, Mo, you saved one. I just broke, after I read about this, this isn't something I developed myself. Yeah, he tried to break up uh, first videotape, and then cassettes, then so CDs. I said, no, no, you must work backwards. Finally, he, he reached a record, and you so put it into a jar. We have a lot of these jars. Sure we do. Now you pour this. This is a mixture of alcohol and lacquer thinner. And you close that up, and you let it sit for 24 hours. That's it. Oh, 24 hours later. Look what we got. It looks like squid ink, right? 
put the pasta in here, it'll be fine. Now the record, <laughs> the record is completely dissolved. I, let's see, there's maybe one piece left in here. Ah. Uh. Here it comes. That's the last track. There was, that's all that's left. That's all that's left. That's the and bell what you song. have in here now is a concentrate. Which that needs to be strained with this, a cone type strainer with, with a, a fine mesh. A filter. Well, wait a minute, who am I? Who are you? Uh, if I pull Marco this off. Polo. No, no, I'm Admiral Nelson. If I pull this off, I'll get a statue in Dublin. I just know it. For our Anglophiles. Now we're going to pour this into the strainer. You can see it's dripping into the can. You gotta kinda gotta stir it. And this is your concentrate. This is very thick. So you would dilute it with some uh, alcohol. Now we need something to work on. And we have a chair I don't right get up there. It. It's been sitting there. Why? Just for this bit. This is a mission chair and it's been fumed. It also has an old black wax on it. Now, once this dries, you can let this, you let it dry and sand it down and put another coat on. And you can keep building up your coats if you want. Or in the summer, you could just wear a light shirt. A light or a windbreaker. Right, right, right. Well, that certainly was a very exciting show. Yes, we learned about the Empire, about Napoleon, about Josephine. And we uh, ironed out a dent. We shellacked our uh, armoire and we made our own shellac out of an old 78 record. Next week, the mystery of gold leafing is revealed on TV for the very first time. And we have a special guest, Yan Can Cook, and he's going to be with us. Martin Yan's coming here. We're going to take care of him. We're going to show him a few tips. So come back, and uh, that's, that's it. That's it. Just end it real simple. That's all you have to do. Can I get the last word in? As you always do. I know I do.